battle rages upon the scorched battlefields of the Igneous Delta. In a roaring bolt of celestial energy, the Stormcast Eternals are born into the fray, courageous liberators amongst the first to face the foe. But they are soon set upon by the Bloodstoker Vec the Flare and his monstrous Korgorath. Alright, so this is uh, going to be kind of a how-to, but also uh, we're going to be playing the, uh, the little campaign from the new Thunder and Blood starter set from Age of Sigmar. We're really into Age of Sigmar, and, and we wanted to actually kind of start to branch out with our armies a little bit and get more into the keyword aspect of the hobby. So, uh, you know, this what a better way to start than this uh, great starter set. It came with uh, this mat here and this, the models we're going to be playing with. Uh, we're going to start and we're going to play all four missions. We'll have, it'll probably be a two-parter. We'll probably have a first part and a second part. Um, but by the end of it, we'll be playing with the entire starter set. And we'll be using the rules from um, the uh, Thunder and Blood starter set. Uh, it's regular Age of Sigmar rules. This first mission here is called... Thunderstrike, and uh, it's a good way to kind of slowly work your way into learning the rules of your army and uh, playing playing a little bit with each of the models. Um, the uh, the armies for this particular battle, Thunderstrike, is uh, the, where you have Josiah the Heavy Flame of Freya playing the Stormcast Eternals, and the army for this is going to be one unit of five Liberators, including the Liberator Prime. Liberator Prime is the guy with the little ponytail there. And on the other side, Corn Bloodbound, Commissar Wood, that is me, I'll be playing them. Uh, the, uh, it'll be one Blood Stoker, who is Vec the Flare, and his monstrous Korgorath. Alright, uh, this is just a 24 by 24 inch uh, battlefield here. Uh, set up the unit of Liberators wholly within 3 inches of the center of the battlefield we have here. Um, then set up the Korgorath and the Bloodstoker within three inches of each other with both models within one inch of the edge of the battlefield. So I've got them here uh, ready to face off. Alright, so glorious victory. The battle continues until one side is wiped out. There's nothing special about this one. It's just a straight up uh, move and kill. And the, uh, to the other side achieves a major victory if the other one is wiped out. All right, so now the Korgorath and the Bloodstoker have certain things they have to do during this match. Um, the following rules determine what the Corn Bloodbound units do during their turn, and you control the actions of the Stormcast Eternals. When playing solo, choose who goes first in each battle round. So uh, we're not playing solo, so uh, we'll choose who goes first. I'm going to say the, the Stormcasts are going to go first. They find themselves up against quite a large beast. Yes, if the Korgorath or the Bloodstoker are more than three inches away from the Liberators, they will move straight towards them in their movement phase and will attempt to charge them if they were within 12 inches of them during the charge phase. They will not run. The Korgorath and the Bloodstoker will not retreat if they are within three inches of the Liberators and will pile in during the combat phase and attack. If the Korgorath or the Bloodstoker are both in position to attack in the combat phase, then the Korgorath will attack first. Alright, so the Liberators get the uh, first chance to move. We have our handy dandy ruler. Since we don't have any generals, then we don't have... Uh, So we don't have generals, we don't have command abilities. I have one, but uh, he does not. Yep. So, we got some dice here. We'll grab three apiece. This should be enough for whatever we gotta do. Yep. Um, so, uh, during the, the battle, also, what's kind of nice, is we have our... Um, rules here on our in the book right. so everything we need to play is in here cool uh, from the book I know that liberators have a move of five inches all right so I'm going to start moving them out as there's nothing to do with the hero phase I don't yep. think 
Nope, nothing to do with the hero phase. Okay. <laughs> the movement phase. They do not have a ranged attack. Uh, and I did not declare any charges. Does the guy here have a ranged attack at all? No? Like during, uh, I don't know what the Lord, um, no. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, you could try and charge. Uh, I could try and charge. Uh, yeah, why as well try and charge? Yeah. You see the ruler here? You gotta get within an inch. So you are seven inches away. So you need to get a, a six to get um, a successful charge. But wouldn't I need to do this in the movement phase though? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Nope. We nope. had the hero phase and there wasn't enough. No. Nope. Seven? Seven gets you there? You're seven inches away. Oh, well, damn. Yeah. Yeah. So. Seven inches. Gets me there. And he can come right up to there. And then everybody else. Kind of just mills yeah. in behind them. And mills in behind them there. Okay. All right. Since you chose, uh, you uh, charged, you get to pick the unit that goes first. Uh, I'm so. obviously going to pick my own unit in this okay. situation. And then you would pile in three inches. Three Which inches. is the the standard thing, so yeah, he's going to move come into around the side there. to make way for the others. He can come the... in, he can come in, and then everybody else would just kind of have to pile up in the back there as well. Because I don't want to also be in combat with the... Exactly. Yeah. He's yeah. already eligible, but not yet. Alright, yeah. so, you've got... They, what is their melee range? Their melee range is one inch. Okay. So just the first three have got the the melee range. All right, just the first three. They each have two attacks right. with their uh, warhammers. It's gonna be six. And, and the Liberator Prime makes uh, one additional attack with his. So I'll just roll another one of these after that. Okay. You roll re-roll one of your misses. Yeah. Right, and they are hitting on a 4 plus. Alright. Just re roll that one. Yeah. Nice. That's really good rolling. Yes. He hit with every last hit. That's, a, that's really good. Alright. Alright, now they are wounding on a 3 plus. Wounded on a 3. Uh, so three wounds? Four wounds? No, so I got four wounds. Alright. And what do I need? What's uh, the rend on it? There is no rend for one damage. Okay. And can you see my save? No problem. On the Bloodstoker seat. Yeah, the red section. Bloodstoker, you have it. Four plus save. Four plus save. Alright. Alright, so I do. I take a damage. It takes one damage out of your five wounds. Okay. So I'll put this dice right there next to him for right now, because he is damaged. Now, I am going to, um, I'm actually, since nobody can hit anymore, and I'm within three inches, where did I put that ruler? It's in the book. Ah, no, it's right here. Ha-ha! Uh, That's how good of a ruler it is. Uh, I'm within three inches, so I can pile in. So I'm going to choose to pile in with my... Corderath. All right, because he has to. If if I have a choice, then the Corderath has to go first. So the Corderath has five attacks. It's perfect. I have uh, five dice here. They hit on three plus three plus. Okay, I'll re-roll that because it was leaning, so I missed one, and then it hits on three pluses again. All right, so that's four wounds on your liberators with negative one ren. That's not right. Your liberators have a four plus save, and so they would be five. And they can re-roll save ones of one if they're carrying their sigmarite shields. All right, so you have a five plus save on four dice, 
Three rolling ones. Not right. enough, though. That so is. that is going to be two prosecutors or two liberators because they are two wounds apiece. All right. So you can just take off the back two. All right. Since you get to choose. All right. Now my blood stoker gets to attack. All right. Torture blade is three attacks. So I got three here, and it's three plus three plus. All right, and three plus. All right, so three wounds, sir, at no rend. So you have a four plus. Four save. plus, three roll ones. Three rolling ones. All right, that's All right. one damage. So that's one damage, so one of your guys has one. And then the Blood Stoker has three more attacks with his Blood Whip. They are three plus, four plus. So I missed one, and four plus. And I missed all of those. So that's all my attacks. It's all your attacks. Um, you lost combat by two guys. Uh -huh. uh, your bravery is six, so you need a four plus to not lose another guy. All right, so you're good. Or you needed a four or less. Yeah. So you're fine. So he met his bravery. So now it is my turn. There's nothing I can do except for choose uh, who to attack. So I'm going to try to attack with... Uh, I like the Bloodstoker. You know, he, he tries to run this fight. They charged up on him, so... Uh, three plus, three plus. Alright, so all those hit. And then three plus again. So I have two hits there. Or two wounds. No two rend. Wounds, no rend. You need four pluses, re-rolling ones for your Liberators. Oh, all I right. made one, but because of that wound dealt earlier, yep. he goes down. He goes down, but that's all right. And then I have three plus, four plus attacks. So only one, and one. So you get one more four plus, three rolling ones. Oh. All right, re-roll that one. Uh, nah, that's not enough. That's all right. All right, so you still have your, your, your Liberator Prime. So he gets two attacks, uh, or they all get... Um, they all get two attacks, but um, he gets three. Yeah. So you'll have um, five. Five attacks all together. Yeah. All right. All right, and they hit on your war hammers and on four plus, three plus. Two. All right. Oh. Oh. That's all two. right. And then now the Korgorath. The Korgorath has his claws and fangs. Three plus, three plus. There's a two. And then three plus again. Alright, sir. This might be it. I think it might negative be. Negative one rin, so five pluses with uh, re rolling ones. Re -roll ones. Oh! Alright. One goes down still, though, because he's been taking damage. Alright. Because the... there are actually two, so this guy would have one too. Oh, yep. That's all right. It's your turn. So your your guy gets his three attacks. Four plus. Four plus three plus. Yeah. Oh, we were ones. No, it's no, not that was the, that was on the saves. Yep. And, all right, and a three plus. No. no. All right. Let me finish this guy off with the uh, blood stoker. It's his wound. I need three plus, three plus. All right, two, sir. No rend. Four plus. Oh! All right, three more attacks. Three plus, four plus. One, sir. Three rolling ones. Oh, that's exactly what I needed. All right, so that's a major victory. But I yeah. feel this battle was very one-sided. Yeah. The Stormcast Eternal's prosecutors make haste to the open gate of Azir, sealed by Sigmar so long ago. A host of blood reavers charges to stop them, axes raised. If these violent cannibals can be overcome, the prosecutors will breach the portal and allow reinforcements to join the battle in mass. All right, guys, we're on the second battle of four. This will be the end of part one. Um, 
As you can see, we've got the prosecutors there, the prosecuting attorneys with their hammers of justice. Um, they are set up in one area, and we have, as you can see here, uh, some zinch dice that are marking a six inch line from the edge. Uh, the Josiah will command the storm cast, I will command the uh, corn blood bound. Uh, it's one unit of three prosecutors, including, including the prosecutor prime. Uh, the Corn Bloodbound Army consists of the following units. One uh, unit of 20 Reavers, including a Chieftain, Icon Bearer, and Horn Blower. Alright, so I could set up the... Maybe it's this way. I could set up the guys as here. So I have them set up in the center and over here to the side. Um, the point of this, uh, the Prosecutor Prime must be the general for the Stormcast Eternals army and he, he adds one to his wounds. So he'll have three wounds and they have two. Use the entire playmat for this battle. Uh, Stormcast Eternals are on the one side and I got the corn over here. Uh, the battle lasts for up to six battle rounds. The Stormcast Eternals immediately achieve a major victory if all models in the corn bloodbound army have been slain or have fled or if the Stormcast Eternal's hero phase, at least one prosecutor is within six inches of the edge of the battlefield opposite their uh, setup zone. See the map. So, if they were within six inches of this during a hero phase, then uh, they get a major victory. And any other result is a major victory for the Corn Bloodbound. So, we have six rounds to do this in, sir. Okay. Maybe I should read the, the tip here. It says, A darkening sky provides an opportunity to learn about the rules for models that can fly, and also to learn about the crucial impact that battle shock can have on a battle. In this round, the prosecutors will need to use their superior maneuverability and missile fire to wear down the enemy before Blood Reavers can close in and charge. The Stormcast Eternals player should try to pick one enemy unit at a time, or bypass the Blood Reavers to get to the exit point on the edge of the battlefield. The Corn Bloodbound player needs to concentrate his warriors to overwhelm the prosecutors. Alright, sir. Sigmar's Light always has the first turn. Okay, and prosecutors have a movement of 12 inches. Alright, that's our whole ruler. Whole friggin' ruler. Gotta lean all the way over here to get right. to them. How far is their missile weapon shot? And their missile weapon shot, wow, is 18 inches. Dang. Nice. Just brought out the measure just so in case we need it. Yep. Put a die out to keep our turn counted. All right. So that was the hero phase. There's really no hero abilities. Yep. Uh, the shooting phase. Shooting phase there's definitely is after some... movement. Yep. Uh, each of the uh, prosecutors has two attacks with their celestial hammers, and because they have a pair of them, uh, they can reroll ones to hit. All right. Right. Okay, uh, two attacks. Hitting on a four plus and wounded and wounding on a four plus with no red. Okay. They're targeting this unit of uh blood reavers. Okay. Alright. You can re-roll ones, right? Yes. Nice. Alright, so it's four fours again. Got three. Three. All right. Any rend? Uh, no rend. What's my save for the reavers? Uh, your save for the reavers is six plus. All right. So no rend. So I actually get a save. Three sixes. Let me see them. Oh, I got one. Oh, you did. So that's two. How many damage is it? One damage. One damage. All right. So that's two dead blood reavers. And what we're going to do is we're going to set them right next to each, right next to the thing there, because now. Um, or do you want to declare any charges? No. Okay. So it now moves to the battle shock phase. And since I've lost two people during this round, I need to take a battle shock test. So I roll a dice and add 
how many casualties I have to the dice. Now, what's my bravery? Six. My bravery is six. So, anything over a four, I lose more models. So, I don't. I pass my bravery, and... I was really hoping was for a six good. there. <laughs> All right. So, what's the move for my Blood Reavers? Six. All oh, right. Sorry, Blood Reavers, yeah, six. Six. All right. So... Try. See if I can move them. Oh, that's cool. All right. Let's see what they can do. All right. So they move to there, and then these guys are also going to move out. Side note, because of that icon, you would have only needed uh, three or less. Uh, sorry, five or less, because of the, you had one to the bravery of all models with the icon. Oh, okay. Nice. That'd be good to know for next for next uh, battle shock phase. My uh, icon gives me plus one to my bravery. What does the horn give me? Because the I believe horn? I have a horn yes. in there, too. Uh, add one to the run and charge rolls. All right. So, uh, I'm not going to... Um, I don't have any missile weapons. Uh, so I'm going to try and charge. Now, I am three inches away, so double ones will fail. I don't get double ones, though. I get five. So I'm able to move in. Five oh, inches. Cool. So the first guy has to come in and make contact, and then everybody else can kind of spread out as they see fit. So five gets him there. Oh, he tipped over, but that's all right. Five there, five gets him there, five gets him there, five gets him there. Alright. Now, uh, it is my turn, so I, and uh, I'll pick the first unit to go first. So, of course, I'm going to make these guys. And I'm just going to kind of pile in so that everybody can, can get an attack. He moves around, and then he moves so that he can get within an inch. Now, I got two profiles, each... Blood Reaver carries an axe and a blade, and I can choose whether to use the hack blade or the axe. Um, I am going to use, and the Chieftain gets two attacks rather than one. Um, the Chieftain is... Uh, I don't see him in there. So, I might have two Chieftains in this unit. <laughs> so... Um, the I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys in contact. So that's four, five, six, and come on, one more dice. All right, seven. Uh, I'm going to choose to, uh, I'm going to use my Reaver Blades, they're 4+, plus, 4+, plus, but they have no Ren, but I'll get to reroll ones if I miss, so 4+, plus, 4+. Plus. There's a 1. There is a 1, so I'll reroll the 1, it's not a 4+. plus. Alright, so now I need 4+, plus again, to do any damage. Nice! Oh. Alright, so 4, four uh, saves, no Ren. For one damage piece. You have four plus save. All right. No re-rolling ones because they do not have that little auto blade. Nope, they don't. Just a four up save and wings. Yep. Ooh. That's all right. Two, lost two. That... Now you can put those on your Celestial Prime if you wish, and nobody will be lost as of right now. Yeah. Let's make it so that these three guys are doing work. Okay. All right. Two so, guys. two wounds go on to your main guy. Yeah. But he's still in the fight. Yes. All right, sir. So you have your prosecutors. This things. All right. Prosecutors. Oh, and the prime makes an extra attack with his uh, uh, with his hammers. All right. 
They each have two, but except this time it's three plus three plus. All right, three plus three plus. Nice. Death from above. Yes. All right. All right, you get to re-roll once. Yep. Right? Yes. Yeah. All right. And that's the thing. Four plus is uh, three plus is five. Yeah, three plus is so much easier to get than a four plus. <laughs> All right, now I need a uh, three plus again. All right. Do you need one extra re-roll that one as the extra hit yeah. that your uh, leader gets? Yes. Three plus and then three plus again. Yeah. Okay, so six wounds. Is there any rend on those wounds, sir? No. Okay, so I get my six plus save. Look, I got two, but I lose four guys. He was tipping anyway. Yeah. All right. So. He's wounded. He's leaning. I can add one to my bravery. So, I'll, I'll add three uh, to it instead of four because I lost... Four guys. So, three plus that is four, so my bravery is still good. So it is your turn, sir. Oh, jeez. Now you can choose to retreat, or you can choose to stand and fight, but you do get to do your uh, shooting attacks before you do your um, <laughs> melee right. attacks. I will not retreat, because I think I'd have to move that way. You would? All right. So and you wouldn't get a chance to shoot either. I wouldn't get a chance to shoot. So, uh, I'll forgo that, uh, <clears throat> and I'll just move right, right into shooting. Okay, move right into shooting phase. Yep. So you can kill off those last three guys. Yes. Uh, yes, two attacks apiece. You need fours for these, or? Uh, I need, yes, I need fours for these. Okay. And I get to reroll ones. Yep. Yeah. Nice. It's three. Uh, need fours again. Oh, nothing. Hmm. Alright, uh, now your melee attacks, because we move into the close combat yes, phase. You can't charge. Yep, yeah, he's gonna swing around. He all, everybody gets a three inch uh, pile in. Hold on. Come on, stand up. <laughs> you have difficulty standing. It's alright. <laughs> he's a little hurt. Yeah, he's a little hurt. <laughs> Those two wounds have got him a little shaky. <laughs> okay. Uh, this time it's three plus, three plus. Alright, so it is now my turn. These are your dice here. Yep. Um, I get six inches of movement in the movement phase. I have no hero abilities. So, move my guys up to here. Uh, this is round two. Uh, I have no things else I can do, so that is the end of my turn. It now turns to turn three. All right. Try to move these guys 12 inches. First thing, because as stated previously, nothing to do with the hero phase. Let's skirt the edge here. see you through the thing. Yeah, I would say you can. I just tried to look, but it looks like the windows are a little too high. But that's alright. Um, right, uh, the, uh, so it, now you're not going to charge me, of no. course. Alright, I'm going to try to see if I can't do something here. Okay. So I get six inches. Stop me right here. Uh, 
All right. Uh, of course, I'm going to try and charge because I have nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. These are Blood Reavers for, for Pete's sake. They don't fail with four. So four will get me right over to here. Four will get him to there. And then four to there. And everybody else kind of shuffles up. Do the corn blood shuffle. Alright. Uh, during the uh, combat phase, I'm going to uh, pile in so I can move this guy three inches in to him. And this guy can come in to him. That means this guy can come in. So I'll get a little more attacks than I probably previously would have, but still having to do the shuffle. So looks like five guys are in. Uh, one of them, uh, he, where's the chieftain? He's holding heads. Yes, he's here. Chieftain's there. All right, so I get five attacks uh, plus one for the chieftain, so that'd be six all together. Okay. Uh, and the Blood Reavers, I believe they are four plus four plus. I'm going to use... I'm going to use my axes, my meat axes. Meat Ripper Axe! They, uh, they don't get to reroll ones, but they have a Ren. So I need 4 plus, 4 plus. Oh man, I should have done those reroll ones. Alright, so I have one, sir, and it's negative one Ren. One for negative one Ren. That's 4 plus. 4 plus. So it'd be 5. Yep, need a 5! Yeah! Alright. Your guy isn't dead this time. Alright, so. Um, in combat, you could pile in, which you would want to. Yes. So he moves into like that. And no attack away, sir. All right. I'm just going to grab an extra guy for this one. Okay. Because I've got a total of seven attacks. Three plus, three plus. Yes. Three plus, three plus. Be rolling ones. All right. All of them hit. All of them hit. And now I need a wound. Three plus. Not all of them wound. So four wounds. Yeah. Wait, yeah. yeah. Now I need sixes. And I don't get any, so I lose four guys. Now I don't have a banner in this unit, so uh, anything over two will uh, hurt me. So, five plus four is nine. So, my my thing is six, so I lose three more guys. All right. And then now, sir, it is your turn. Okay. Uh, I'm going to forego moving, because I see victory in my sights, and I'm going to try to shoot. Okay. Four plus. Four plus. Three rolling ones. There's a one. That's what you like to see. Yes. All right, four rolled plus four. again. That rolled so good on the fours this game. <laughs> All right. Fours. All right, so three. Yep. This could be my last three guys. I need sixes. That is it. The Blood Reavers are dead. And the prosecutors fly to the other end to victory. Victory for Sigmar! They've opened up the realm gate so reinforcements could come and help out the cause. All right, check back in for episode two of the Thunder and Blood and the exciting conclusion of Thunder and Blood.